I think we're ready to get going. Okay, I wanna welcome everybody to the Architecture Review Board uh, meeting of June 22nd, 2021. Uh, first item on uh, our agenda is old business. We are gonna bypass the, uh, the um, acceptance of the meeting minutes due to shortage of members uh, from last meeting. Um, so first on our agenda, it's 5AR2-21. Um, installation of a rooftop solar at 160 Metal Drive. Our, our residents here. Um, we're looking for Danielle Turner, I think. I'm here. Okay, Danielle, would you like to go ahead and present? Sure. Um, thank you, Jeff, for pulling that up. So this is the installation of a 5.44 kilowatt roof-mounted solar array. Um, we originally submitted this without the conduit uh, having been hidden. Um, this, what you're looking at right now, is the updated plan set to show that the conduit has been rerouted so that it cannot be seen from the road. So you can see the 160 Meadow Drive and you can see that the road is sort of vertical uh, on the left-hand side and the green line is the conduit. So there is about 18 inches of conduit going up over the ridge cap. And that's uh, basically unavoidable because it has to connect to the array that's on that uh, mounting plane that is present uh, visible from the road. Everything else is on the back or side of the house. And then you can see down at, toward the bottom of the array, uh, there's a dotted line and that's going through the interior of the home so as not to be seen from the road. Uh, Fran, you have any questions? No. Uh, Chris? I'm good. Uh, Mary? I noticed that you had a photo simulation um, with your submittal, and I think it was the one from last time, which was kind of confusing to me. Jeff, can you show us that? The photograph. Okay, no, the one that shows the lines. No, it's the photo, yeah, there you go. So what you're saying is, how is it working now? It's going all the way down the back? Yes. So, the back roof. Yep, so that small yellow line that you see on the top of the, up toward the ridge there, that is still going to be there because it's inevitable because the array is gonna go on that mounting plane, but it will go over the back of the roof. And instead of these two lines that you see here on the side of the house, yes, this one will go toward down the back of the roof and down the back of the house. And then this second one down here is actually going to go through the garage on the interior of the garage. So you won't see that one that's uh, sort of got a not quite right angle in there. Okay, so of the things showing in this photograph, um, the, the vertical lines following the, the side facade of the house are, are gone. The only one that remains is the little one going over the ridge line. Correct, yep. Okay, thank you. Sure. I'm good, I'm good. Okay, uh, I do have a question. Um, is that roof in good shape now or is it being re, re shingled before you mount everything? Uh, we did a structural evaluation and found that it was suitable and I do have an engineer's structural letter that I did submit along with the permit application um, stating that it was uh, structurally sound to, uh, to hold the, exit, the new PV system that would go up. Yeah, I'm not asking about structure. I'm asking more about the shingles. It looks like there's a lot, quite a bit of moss and, and weathering on those. I just don't want the client to be put into a hardship. Um, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we, we do evaluate the, the uh, condition of the existing roofing materials um, prior to even entering into a contract with the customer about it. So that has been addressed yeah. and we are confident that uh, it's in good enough condition to mount the PV on it. And Stuart, and, uh, um, when this was presented last month, we asked the same question, looking at the same moss. And yeah. uh, the person that presented at that point reported back the age of the roof was like less than 10 years. Yes, that's um, correct. So, but if, 
yeah, if you have a 10 year shingle though, you're, you're caught. Uh, so the other thing, I, I apologize, I wasn't in the last presentation, but uh, um, you're gonna have a surface mount on the back of the roof that's gonna run both vertical and horizontal. Um, I'm sorry, what vertical and horizontal, what do you mean by that? We are gonna have uh, a PV array on the back of the roof as well, yep. So that will run perpendicular to your uh, PV array, and then it goes down parallel, and then it cuts back, if that green line is the uh, conduit. Yes. On the plan view. Mm -hmm. um, what size conduit are you using? Let me check for you. I don't know off the top of my head here, but I have the plans up. I just don't want any debris caught on, on the roof, such as oh. leaves and limbs and uh, becoming a maintenance issue. Definitely, I understand that. Sorry, just give me a moment here on find the conduit specification. Let's see. I apologize, I don't have this up here. I'm looking for it right now through my paperwork okay. here. It's usually, I believe it's usually a one inch conduit. Okay. And that's rigid? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I just, that's the only thing I'm, I'm concerned about, but other than that, everything else looks all right. And I can certainly confirm with you uh, the size of the conduit, absolutely, um, okay. as soon as I find it. <laughs> Yeah, just make sure that, you know, the client's aware that there may be extra maintenance. Yes, absolutely. Rooftop. So, okay, anyone have any other questions? Committee, you're good. So you can call uh, Jeff's office in the morning and get our answer. Sounds great. Thanks a lot. You bet. Have a great evening. You too. Thanks. I'll be back for another presentation later. <laughs> okay. Well, do you want to do it now? Um, sure, if you don't mind. Yeah, I think I'm I'm down the list of ways, but absolutely, if you. Is everyone good with that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's do it. Let, let me just pull up that agenda. Absolutely. Okay. Why don't you go ahead? All right. Thank you. So this is for 2000 uh, Clover Street. Okay. This, um, this is six AR dash eight dash twenty one. Yeah, 2000 yeah. Clover Street, uh, roof mounted solar. Okay, go ahead. So as you can see, the the road is down toward the bottom. It's horizontal, the bottom of the drawings. So you can see that the two mounting planes where the PB are um, going to be mounted do face the road. So we have designed the conduit so that there's very minimal. You can see on the left-hand side of the left-hand mounting plane that there's very, yep, exactly right there. There's very minimal and that will go down the side of the house, which is not visible from the road. And then as in the other one, on the other side of this array, there is just a minimal going over the ridge. And then that will go down the side of the house, the back of the house and the side of the house and connect to the other solar array from, from the, over the ridge cap. And then in the front of that second solar array, there's very minimal conduit exposed to connect to uh, the meter and the AC disconnect there. Yes, right there. So let's see. Can we take a look at the house? Yeah, there's, there is a little picture of it there. Yep. So it looks like it looks like it, instead of the road being down here, it looks like the roads on this side of the house. Is that right? Yeah, road, roads on the left side. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. We sort of angled it like as though the road was where the end of the driveway is. I see now that it's kind of like. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. It's, it's just like the the house isn't like at a right angle. It's kind of not perpendicular or parallel. I see what you're saying, though. Yeah, you're correct. So this area that I've circled here, 
what is what is that that we're looking at? The gear is over here, right? And our condo is kind of working its way around here. What is this? So you're highlighting two parts of conduit. So the one on the left-hand side, that small amount that's going out toward the edge of the, like above the, where the gutter would be, uh, that's going to go down and you can see on the right, uh, the left-hand side of the house, that's our energy storage system on the inside. So that conduit will be connecting over there to the energy storage system. And then on the other side, coming out of the other side of this, uh, this same array on the same mounting plane will be the other part, the other part of that connects to the other mounting plane with the solar on it. And then what the second part you've circled toward the bottom, that's a small part of conduit you'll see from the roof that connects to the meter and the AC disconnect. So um, a lot of these, when we see conduit that are making these longer runs, the railing is through the attic. It's not over across the top of the roof. So did you look at what the feasibility was of putting some or all, but, but some of this under the roof in the attic space? Uh, honestly, I, I'm not totally sure. I'm the permit and inspections coordinator. So I, I approached my design team with your requirements and your suggestions for uh, how we reroute the conduit so that it's not visible from the road. And this is what they, what they designed. So if you would prefer that we try to get this, get more of this conduit inside the house, we could do that potentially. We'd have to do another evaluation, um, but I could definitely approach my design team with that request. So that's something yeah, you think typically that's... discuss with the owners as part of your design of the system? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you all the way. Sorry, I was going to say that that's not something that you discuss with your owners in terms of the preference for conduit routing when you, when you do the design? Um, generally, no. Um, most of the towns that we work with don't have um, specific requirements for conduit. So we basically just design it in the way that's going to be most beneficial for the system. Um, a lot of times we paint the conduit if uh, like to match the house if the customer has an issue with, you know, the silver uh, sheen of the conduit and that usually will suffice. Hey, Chris, this is Stuart. I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Um, but I think that's a good point. Uh, you know, most of our uh, solar companies that come in do do internal conduit runs. Um, so I think what we need to do is uh, at some point get you guys caught up to speed on it. Okay, well, like for the last one, we did put that conduit run inside and, in, you know, in the interior where it was necessary. So we could definitely change the design for this one to, uh, you know. Yeah, it, it's, you know, and it's mostly all uh, internal and not just partial. So, um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're really encouraging uh, solar companies. We've got a great relationship. I think we're, we're a, a pretty... Uh, proactive board. Um, so it may be something you guys want to consider going forward. Certainly. Um, uh, Fran, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Thank you. Uh, Mary? I'm all set. Okay. So uh, you can call uh, Jeff's office uh, for in the morning and uh, get our answers on both projects. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate your time and thank you for uh, moving this one forward. <laughs> you bet. Thank you. Thanks. Have Talk a great day, you everyone. You, yep. too. you too. Thank you. So next, uh, and thank you everyone for being patient. Next on our agenda is 5AR-7-21, 95 Chadwick Drive, Alfredo Prezio, I think, Prezio. It's addition so cool. to a main entrance dining room garage and second story bedroom i apologize about the pronunciation of your name <laughs> okay this is alfredo preciosi um yes after the the last meeting i checked in the the project and i checked your comment and uh, absolutely I make a big change. Sorry for the presentation. I I, I trying to make a, a better uh, close to the meeting, but uh, 
I, I can finish the the render and and just I trying to to make something faster uh, for for apply and after that I I have some problem with with my time, but the the important point is the main entrance. I I make something simple, really, really the really necessary uh, site for the main entrance, I think. And we have in the, the really better job. I think it's a better job with the with the main entrance. And uh, it's the same side, is the same uh, distance between the existing uh, facade uh, to the new uh, uh, line, the, the, the new uh, line with the with the uh, garage. And for the uh, uh, side, the the right side in the window. Yes, I, I use the this window in the size elevation. I use the same window, the same side for the window in the rest of the house. Um, and I change the side for the, the thing I call the box. I reduce for one inch because I just, I, I think in a game and I, I just need a new, a different texture, a need different color. I don't really need a, a, a big uh, box uh, going outside of, of the house. No, I just need a a, a color or a, a texture, a different texture. And I think um, uh, the material in the in the top of the box. Uh, I, I thinking uh, I don't have something better to the flashing, and I thinking uh, build uh, something uh, with angle for protect of the animals or you know beards or, or something. Okay. And, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I, I, as, Fran, do you have any questions? Um. Well, the question. I think um, Alfredo was just explaining uh, the changes to what we're referring to as the box um, uh -huh. in, in the back, uh -huh. uh, which we had some concerns about last time. So if, if I'm, I just want to make sure I understand uh, what the material is there. I know you had proposed, um, you know, the horizontal, I think it was a, a lap slot siding before, but you re you were just saying you reduced it by an inch is that what you were saying yes the the change is the the side in the first proposal i i talk about eight inches out of the the house and now i i, I just need one inches just for change the material and and make a, a, a little change in between the texture and the material is a exterior siding uh, board. I don't know if I include in this. Let me check one second. <clears throat> I I try to. Oh, sorry, I don't. Uh, in the let, let me check in the in the section. If I I, I think I write in the section. Sorry for. Uh huh. Yes, this material in the it's a it's a bore, it's a harbor for exteriors. Actually, thinking in this color because it's the it's the uh, I think is is the better match with the sixteen color of the house. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris, you have any questions? Uh, I don't think I have any questions. Thank you. Uh, Mary? Uh, Stuart, I just wanted to make sure you understood what was presented before because you weren't here, right? 
So there was a two story, the, the entrance now is a single story. It was proposed originally as a two story entrance. Mm -hmm. Then there was this box as Alfredo calls it, which, pr which protrudes from the house as kind of like a discontinuous, a purposeful discontinuous element. So there was some question about that. But what we said was that the, the massing was too large and the character was dissimilar to the homes in the neighborhood and the architectural language was inconsistent. So I just wanted you to understand because Alfredo didn't give us a summary of what happened last time. So for what it's worth. Okay. Uh, so go ahead. No, thank you. Keep going. So I just wanted to check with Alfredo. Those are the two changes basically. Now we have a one story um, entrance porch mm -hmm. and then we have the same box only it's it's not as much in the relievo, right? It's a little bit flatter to the house. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. in the in the little three D I have in the in the first page, uh, I can show the the size of the main entrance is is reduced just for the first um, the first floor and the window under the main entrance is the existing window and I try to align with the existing uh, garage the, 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 the existing roof of the garage for for um, having something more um, uh, with uh, that have sense with the with the existing uh, roof. And yes, all, 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 all the, the changes you, you're talking about is, is correct. So I have a couple of questions. It looks like your windows above the garage do not line up with the garage. So that has a concern in my part. And I don't really understand the back corner window. Yes. the. My, my first proposal was uh, align the external windows in the same distance. And my proposal now is have the same distance between windows. Sorry for my picture. I know smiling all the video is just is freezing. freezing. At, the, at the last meeting, they were talking about how the the windows didn't, they weren't equally spaced. And so these ones are equally spaced now. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. In what direction, Jeff? Laterally, from each other. Yeah. yeah my, my, my first proposal is having like a mirror, the same distance from the, the the exterior to interior, the same distance in both sides and going forward to the, to the center. And uh, we talked oh, in the meeting uh, that you prefer the, the same distance between windows. Yeah, so Stuart, the comment was that the, the spacing didn't make sense um, based on the original okay. proposal, because that that relationship that he was just talking about, you you, yeah. you lost it with the entrance. Um, so his response is to equally space the windows. So did he answer uh, all the three elements you guys were concerned about? I think we can talk about that during deliberation. All right, but mm -hmm. okay. So are there any more questions or concerns? So Alfredo, you can call Jeff's office in the morning and get our answer. Okay. Thank you. Let me see. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So on the new business, our next uh, item on our agenda is six AR dash one dash. 2143 Metro Park, WW Granger, exterior facade improvements. 
Hey guys, um, I also have uh, Stephen Elver. He's actually the consultant that put together the project for Granger. You can unmute him as well, please. Good afternoon. Okay, go ahead. We are working for Granger to repair some cracked blocks in the corner of the building, the upper part that's shaded in red. Currently, it is not that color red. Um, we just wanted to highlight the part that we're changing now. The color there is white. And um, they happen to be non-load bearing concrete blocks that were built to have architectural look there. It's a pre-engineered metal building with either the metal wall panels or the block in the corners and along the base for architectural look. Well, they find that the brick, or excuse me, the block extending so high up does not fare well when the wind wants to blow and the metal building, a flexible metal building wants to move a little bit and they've noticed it cracking over the years. So our plan is to replace the block above an eight foot height, which you can make out as the base course there across the whole bottom. We're gonna replace that block with metal wall panel supported by um, horizontal girts like the rest of the building. So it's really pre-engineered metal building design, no change to that concept. On um, the color that we're gonna use will be a match to, or as close of a match as we can to the color of the the gray that they have there in the middle top part, the metal panels there, the metal panel um, shape will be the same corrugation to match that. And that's what we're planning to do for this area. Fran, you have any questions? No, I don't, thank you. Uh, Chris? Uh, no questions here, thanks. Uh, Mary? No. Okay, I have one question. If that's a non-load bearing wall, the masonry, how are you holding up your additional work? The new work, um, inside the building, it is framed with steel beams and columns. Um, there's a picture in the upper left that you see in this view right there. Um, so we are taking down the block and we're, we're not, you know, the, the roof is still being supported by roof beams along there. So no change to that. Um, they, and just for security, et cetera, the contractor plans to um, kind of like a good barn raising, have everything ready to go. They plan to take the block down carefully and then put up the horizontal um, wall girts um, and then the metal panel on it to help seal it up quickly and not have it open to the elements and things. Um, so it's really replacing the cladding on the building. Okay. All right. Well, if no one has any more questions, uh, you guys can call uh, Jeff's office in the morning and uh, get our get our answer. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, Thank appreciate you, you guys presenting. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is six AR two dash twenty one three hundred Meridian Center. Meridian Center Associates, closing garage door to create an office. Good evening. Uh, what we're looking for this evening is approval to, as you just mentioned, to take uh, an existing garage door, roll-up door, metal door, and replace it with in-kind uh, to match brick and window and mullions. Uh, to the existing. So we believe it would be an enhancement to this particular portion of the building and would make it look uniform in character with the existing. Uh, Fran, any questions? Oh, yes. So currently at the overhead door, you have a paved drive that goes right up to it. What sort of treatment will you do to protect the window that will be there? Will you be cutting that and putting in stone? We put a curb. Uh, that's a great question, Fran. Uh, I would imagine what we're going to do there, and this would be acceptable to us if we, uh, if we needed to put, I would not want to put a bollard like you see in the photograph there. Right. Um, 
but if we were to extend the either the um, the planting area mm -hmm. uh, would probably be the, the best way to go about doing that. Um, okay. And we do it with the consistent look as the uh, the planting area just immediately to the west adjacent to this area. Good question. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. That's all I had. Thank you. Okay, Chris. So this face is, I'm looking at your little site plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just... I, I'm not sure which way this face is. This face is immediate right there. Uh, that was me taking and standing right there at the bollard, taking a look south. So that's the Erie Canal that's elevated above us. The tree line blocks the Erie pathway. Okay. Yeah, it's extreme. It's non-visible from any public uh, roadway or, or walkway, unless you is have like a, the trees. And that's a utility size brick, it looks like. Um, so, all right, I, I don't have any other questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mary? Um, I, I noticed, um, could you show us the elevation, please, Jeff? I just noticed that uh, obviously the top is aligned with the garage door with that soldier course of uh, brick uh, veneer above it and not with the other windows at the top. So I just wanted to point that out to my colleagues in case anybody had an issue with that. <clears throat> The other windows go up to all the way up to the top. Is that not possible with this window? I guess I, it, it's it's really set back under an overhang. If you look at the photo, so I did notice that, and it didn't really bother me. Okay. But if you show from the photo, you can kind of see what's going on there. Yeah. Correct. Is that everything, Mary? Yep. Okay. I have no questions at this time, but um, you can call uh, Jeff's office in the morning and get our answer. Thank you very much, folks. Appreciate your service and your time. You bet. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next on our agenda is 6AR-3-2130 Stoneham Drive. Uh, Fenady Associate Architects converting an enclosed porch to a bathroom, constructing additional an addition on the south side and adding a covered entryway. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, the, uh, my client, uh, has lived in this house for quite a while. It's a lovely home in a nice neighborhood. Uh, really enjoys the cul-de-sac and it backs up to, essentially up to the park there. Uh, she's only had two faults with the home as she's been living there. Uh, Cause it's, you know, like I said, it's a lovely home with 1939 uh, detailing all back when, when uh, they took time to build things interestingly. Um, the only fault she's found with it is uh, it only has one bathroom and that's up on the second floor. And as she considers leaving, that she's going to be living there quite a bit longer, and, and she's now retired. Uh, having that on the second floor is a little bit more of a hassle. Uh, so she'd like to add a bathroom to the first floor. The other issues, other two minor issues were one, because of the way the house is oriented, um, it has a lovely view, like I said, to this uh, ravine to the rear, which is to the north, uh, but along the front, which is to the south. Uh, is the kitchen and the stairs and all. Uh, so there's very little natural light coming into the house or not as much natural light as she, as she would like because uh, most of her windows are, are to the north. Uh, and then the third uh, item that she's had a concern with is simply that, that uh, the ex uh, entry, uh, the existing entry to the home uh, feels very two-dimensional to her and kind of feels like it doesn't fit into the, to the uh, uh, quality of the rest of the house in terms of, uh, of, its, of its visual character. So those were the three things that she was asking us to address. Uh, so what we've done is, is uh, take a portion of, a, uh, of the screen porch, which is in the, the, the northeast corner, uh, and turn that into the, um, a full bathroom so that uh, she can use it now and in the future because she has plans of actually as she lives here long enough quite possibly moving her bedroom downstairs uh, secondly uh, we've 
created a, a small addition on the front, which would, uh, it's basically about an eight foot by eight foot addition, uh, which will extend a little bit further into the, some of the former porch space uh, to give about an eight by 10 room uh, with a lot more glass along the south and a little bit of the east to bring some more natural light uh, into that space. And also that's opened up to the living space. So to bring a little more natural light in the rest of the house. And then we've designed a, a uh, rather simple uh, covering over the entry uh, using uh, details from the rest of the house, including actually a couple of extra pieces of, of uh, trim that, that uh, uh, these uh, OGs that she's had that had to re be replaced at one time or another and have been repaired. Um, just to give it a, 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 a little cover over the entrance, give a little more three dimensionality to the entrance area. This will sit right on top of the existing stone stoop, um, obviously be attached, et cetera, uh, but yet still not, not uh, cover up too much of the very nice stone uh, that's you know, right behind it. Uh, so those are basically what we were trying to do and I'll answer any questions you, you might have. Oh, I'm, I, excuse me, let me finish up. The uh, addition uh, is we're gonna, all the colors, et cetera, will, and trim, and details will be uh, as similar as we can make them to the existing home. Uh, and you know, the siding on the front will, will match the uh, cedar siding that's on the rest of the, house, uh, rest of the front of the house and the uh, siding on the side will be uh, similar in size. It just won't be this, the, the rusticated um, cedar that's, that's used on the front. And again, painted to match everything. Okay, Fran, you have any questions? Yes, thank you. Um, was there any thought to putting more windows on the east elevation of the sunroom? Yes, uh, we did look into that. Uh, her neighbors are quite close there. Um, and she preferred to just have the one on the corner. Uh, it's just, I mean, you're, we're, we're uh, I believe about 10 feet from the property line and our neighbors even closer to the property line than that. So she wasn't terribly interested in having, uh, you know, too many windows just pointing right at their house. Okay. And can you please uh, just tell me how deep that porch is, the proposed porch? Oh, on the front, the uh, mm -hmm. entry stoop? Yes. Uh, yeah, I believe it's just about, it's just shy of four feet. It's about three foot, eight inches. And the um, underside of the, of the new porch. Will be a, uh, it's like a, a, a tongue and groove wood. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Chris? Since Andrew's not here, I'm going to ask about gutters and downspouts. <laughs> so, starting with the addition, it looks like I don't, I don't know where where you're planning to bring that down. Do you have room to do it? I'm sorry, uh, bring a downspout in there. Our intent would be on the on the the front. We believe there's enough room between the last window to the left and. Um, the house to bring the downspout in there. I'd prefer to do that than have it on the outside uh, corner just because it's right. a little easier to take care of. Yeah, it didn't look like there was enough room there. Well, uh, okay. we can, we'll push the windows around, make sure that they fit. That's, uh, that's but that is one of the, the uh, uh, obviously one of the needs. Right. Um, my other question on the porch then, are you planning to put gutters on that or is that just gonna sheet off? What's your plan there? We were just gonna let that one sheet off just cause it's so small. It's, and there's, you, planning, there's planning on each side of it. It's, it's basically uh, um, uh, wood chips and, and uh, some small plantings in there. Yeah, that's so not any sort of gravel strip. Uh, not at this point, uh, I don't, you know, yeah, I think you should be careful with that because that okay. will splatter up on the nice stone there. They're adding an element to the existing stone and, and adding a condition that it wasn't. Uh, perhaps the gravel is a good idea then. We, we certainly don't want to go to having a, a downspout in that location because that would stick out a little bit, wouldn't it? You could. 
Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, I've seen it done with rain chains too. You know, it's yeah. so an opportunity to add its cultural element or at the very least have it uh, deliberately drip onto something that's not gonna splatter. Um, so those are the questions I had. Thank you. Uh, that's a good concern. Thank you for the help. Uh, Mary? I just wanted to ask if there's going to be a storm door on the entry and I assume that would swing out. Yeah, there presently is a storm door on the entry and, and we were going to just leave. So you're, you're confident that that's enough depth with someone standing on the porch and opening well it's it, it's the same depth that the stoop stoop has been for um you know all these years so it, it it's i guess it's worked so far it has not been a concern okay thank you so a couple questions your uh, your post on your porch are they going to be wrapped or are they just pressure treated what what's going on with your wood columns no, they're they're pressure treated. That's wrapped in one by um, exposing okay. exposing pressure treated. You know, six by sixes on the front of the house would be a tad more rustic than what we're looking for here. Uh, I agree. <laughs> um, so the other question I have is, you know, your site plan shows an existing enclosed porch to become a new bathroom. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if you're including the same roof you have or you're ripping it off and rebuilding it uh, so that it works better. Um, so how is that construction occurring, uh, okay. if you don't mind telling me? Oh, sure. Uh, essentially, our intent at this point, because of the, the location of the windows there, is the rear part, part of that roof will remain. Okay, we will support it, obviously. Uh, and then construct from there on uh, up. But because the uh, rear portion of the roof is there, we could tear it out and just put it back in the same location, but it's in decent shape and it was just re-roofed a few years back. So we will keep that rear portion of it up to the point that it, the present peak is, which is just in front of that, uh, of the uh, existing window in that corner. Uh, and then we will build up from there and then come back down to the front. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I'm sure the engineers will catch it from the town, but do you have footers under that existing porch? Oh, yes. Yeah, that was, that was one of the reasons why we ended up doing this. We were rather surprised um, that there was a continuous foundation underneath the, uh, the, the porch. We have, that we have the original drawings which show that, and in the field we poked a hole, and yes, there's, there is actually a, a, a continuous foundation underneath the, uh, the porch. Okay. And where are you going to relocate your mechanicals? Uh, that is going to be a, a bit of a good time. As of right now, uh, the uh, the condenser that is in that front corner is we're anticipating putting that around to the rear, uh, kind of in the corner between where the the porch and the living room is. Uh, and I believe there's a meter in there which we have to consult with. Uh, uh, our g and &E because they don't always let us choose. Right, and until uh, I assume your existing uh, utilities don't need to be relocated going to the house. No. Okay, but uh, I just want to uh, reiterate uh, what Chris was talking about. Um, you know, uh, basically make sure you have positive drainage away from the house. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, nothing would be worse than pooling up against the uh, the foundation there. No, I, I agree with you. And I think it's a, a real good, um, I hadn't really thought that much about the the drainage off, especially the front porch portion, um, yeah. because it's so small, but in, we're trying to get through a lot of other things, but uh, it's certainly something to, to, uh, to look at. And I'm sure there's there's a number of good solutions we can uh, come yeah, up with. Yeah, and you're actually concentrating the runoff versus uh, existing conditions now so i have anyone have any other questions at all so if uh no one on the committee has any more questions you can call jeff's office first thing in the morning and get our answer thank you very much i appreciate it you bet thank you
Next on our agenda is uh, 6AR-4-2155 Bonnie Bray adding a porch under an existing roof. That is correct, sir. Okay, please start. Um, in the other photo that's not uh, drawn with the porch, we already have the existing concrete stoop there. So it comes out about four feet from the front of the house and seven foot wide. There's three steps that go up to the front door, each of which is roughly five and a half inches. Our plan is, uh, if allowed to, is to use a ledger board, attach it to the house below the two windows there, frame it in with double two by sixes, have our joist on center at 16 inches, and then frame everything in with a composite decking. Um, that's the Brazilian walnut, it would be brown. And then for the tall posts there, they would be four by four pressure treated posts, but would have a Trex composite go over it. And then the railing system is also a Trex composite. Okay, uh, Fran, you have any questions? Are, are there any more? Are there further drawings than this? This I didn't have this link to the agenda, so this is the first I'm seeing. I'm seeing this. Yeah. I just want a minute here to. So the, if we can go, so the, you said you're going to put a ledger board above the windows, but there's really no room to put it over the door. Right now, it's going to run um, from the very top of the stair, uh, right below the white door, and oh, run lower, across. Lower. Oh, below the window. Okay. Below them, correct. And then okay. mount the double two by sixes for the box, and then put your joist uh, 16 inches on center, right where the black railings are. Okay. And that's all one, that's all um, even. It's all one equal, even surface, right? Everything Correct. is one. Correct. Okay. okay. And then um, what's the underside of the um, overhang going to be? Is that is that just drawn in for clarity or? You that's just, think? Yeah, it's, it's drawn in. There's a gutter system that runs across the front and goes down the side. Um, it is white right now, but you know, if we get approved and do it, we probably would like to paint it maybe black to match the railing system. Okay. Fran, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still there. Any other questions? No, nope, thank you. Okay, uh, Chris? Just out of curiosity, was that at one point a garage? It was. But to the I'm not sure we bought it like this um, two years ago. I'm not sure when um, it was converted from a garage to a, a family room. Okay, now your railing detail is, can we go to the drawing? Can you explain what's going on with that design of the railing itself? Well, as you're looking at the picture, we're gonna have a uh, four by four pressure treated post on the left. We're gonna have three of them, uh, one on each side of the existing concrete stoop and then one all the way to the far corner, the far right. Um, and then we're gonna have the railing system that's gonna go right in front of the two windows and then a railing on the left-hand side of the storm door going down. What are, you, what are you making that out of? It looks like you've got like a heavy horizontal at both the top and bottom and then some um, pickets that are kind of sort of widely spaced through there. What, what is all of that? Is that the, you're talking about the railing that's in front of the two small windows? Yes. It, it comes in a kit from Home Depot. So it's all composite. Um, so the top and bottom have your railing and then your metal uh, posts get put in, in between them and attached. And that's intended for windows. porches? Yes. And it's black. Correct. Do you, and you, you don't have a cut sheet or anything on that system, exactly what it is? I do not know. What's going on below the porch then? Is that a lattice or what are you closing that off with? We're probably going to run the Brazilian walnut um, composite underneath. Horizontally? It. Correct. So you're taking your decking material and turning it 
vertical or turning it horizontal, but in a vertical plane. Correct. And the posts are obviously just decorative because it's standing up by itself right now. Yes. And you're, and you're just going to paint the pressure treated floors, four bys? Well, they come, they, they sell the composite decking. The, it's, a po it's a post cover. So it goes right over the post. Oh, I see. All right, I think I, I think I can picture what's going on here now. Okay, thanks. You all set, Chris, Mary? I just wanna clarify, I'm not, I'm, I don't understand the materials. You're, so, so the Brazilian walnut is a composite, you said? Correct. Okay, so you're going to clad the concrete with that? Correct. Okay. So everything, the treads, the risers, the nosing on the steps are all going to be made of a composite Brazilian walnut. That is correct. And the other features that are all black, those are all pressure treated with some kind of cladding on them. You said Trex. Yes. Trex comes in black. Yes. Okay, so then the last question is, what happens to the posts at the top where they meet that empty space with the roof on it? And what happens at the bottom? You have any kind of base or, or um, capital at the top? Well, the, the column or is it just straight in? Well, it's gonna be fastened to the top of the inside of the roof there. Right. But and is then, there any element that makes the transition between the top of the post and the surface it's attached to? Like a wider plate that goes around it, for example. Oh, there's a like a base cover. To, so you slide it down to the very bottom and it gives it a decorative look, top and bottom. Okay, so it's to like- To hide what you mount it to or, or how you mount it. Okay, so that's just a, a square or a rectangular piece. Yep, it would be square. It'd be, it's, it's just over four and a half inches and just slides right over the post cover. Okay, last question. Um, the spacing on the pickets? Yep. What, it's not the way you've drawn it, right? No, no, <laughs> no, no. We're, we're just trying to give you guys a, an idea of what we're looking to do. Okay, and then the, but, last, the last one, the railing going back from the post to the house, on the left side of the door, that's actually a horizontal straight railing, but you just don't know how to draw that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just checking. I mean, it's a little cubist. Yes. Thank you. You bet. You're welcome. Uh, so I just have one question, and uh, what's going on with lighting? Are you putting any lighting up in the in the finished ceiling underneath well, your uh, roof, and are there gutters? Uh, there are existing gutters right now with a downspout uh, to the right side of the porch. And there is, we're not going to add any lighting, but there is a night light to the left of the front door. Okay. That's all I have. Anyone have any other questions? Well, you can call uh, Jeff's office uh, tomorrow morning and get our answer. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you. Next on the agenda is 6AR-5-21, 300 Dale Road. Brett Garwood adding a mudroom and entry door to the garage. Welcome, Brett. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, yeah, so this is fairly straightforward. We have a portion of our garage that is... Um, uh, Kind of an extra space in the garage. This must have been a two car garage at some point with a portion converted to a bedroom. And we want to transform that extra space into a new entrance to the house with a mudroom. Um, we currently just have the center door into our house, which basically walks straight into the middle of our house. And we uh, could really use a kind of a mudroom in a more prominent entrance. So we're looking to do a stoop with covered stoop and mudroom. Okay. Um, I'm trying to orientate myself, sorry. Uh, 
the, the bottom is the existing and the top is the proposed. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah. I live in the neighborhood, so I'm trying to figure out which house it is. Oh, it's at the very end of the cul-de-sac on Dale okay. Road. Back up yep. the and it's the green branch. I follow you. Uh, Fran, any questions? No, I don't. Thank you. Now, you guys run a business out of this house, right? My wife has a licensed daycare, correct? But uh, this is, uh, they enter through the back. The, this is a walkout ranch. So the daycare is in the uh, walkout basement and the rear yard. Okay. Um, Fran, you have any questions? No, thank you. Okay. Uh, Chris? Is the garage door being replaced as well? Um, maybe not right now, but I do want it to be replaced. This is the, the new image is uh, um, is anticipating it being replaced. I'm not sure we'll we'll spend the money today. Are you asking for us to approve it though, in case you do? Uh, yes. We're okay. looking for a little bit more mid-century modern look. Uh, so we have like the five panel door and we kind of do the same thing along the lines with the garage. What's going on with that light fixture? What is, that's a. It, we want a hanging light fixture. So it'd be fixed to the, to the roof, but it would hang uh, 12, 15 inches. Okay. What's going on with your door? It looks like you've got. Uh, it's a five panel light, you know, full light door, but we have. That's a, what I was wondering. Right okay. Panel one side panel so that oh, those kind that'll open up so that you can get a little air in the mudroom without having a screen door, which we don't want. Oh, okay. So that's an operable little panel thing. Yeah. They, so I, I, you know, we haven't priced it, but uh, <laughs> they have those that kind of turn. And so that, that mm -hmm. open in that one panel so that you could have a screen there and keep that open for ventilation without having to have a screen door and your door open into the mudroom. And it looks like you're changing the siding just to, accentuate this, but the transition between what's existing and what's proposed is obscured by the column in this view. Yeah, so is we there do, some sort of trim board or, or what's going on with that? Could it, um, it, um, we may, I have extra siding. So depending on where we land in costs, we would just use the existing siding and fill it in. But otherwise this would be a wood siding and we'd trim it with a yeah, I met the, the existing vinyl is going to have to terminate into, you know, that kind of vertical vinyl channel, right, that would terminate into the side of the wood. So there'd have to be some sort of trim that covers that. So I kind of like it with the, with the, the, uh, the, yeah, eventually the, we want the to size of the lap siding there. Oh, yeah, we, eventually we size, want to but... replace the um, vinyl siding with, uh, kind of a more of a, you know, kind of mid-century modern board and batten kind of look, but that's not today's uh, project. Right. <laughs> so we're trying to do this, you know, towards what we will want in the future. Okay, got it. I don't think I have any other questions. Okay, Mary. Um, I just wanted to know if you thought about, you know, the colonial elements on the left of the facade with respect to your your new mid-century modern look yeah um, especially since the front door has lost its purpose in life um have you thought about the shutters have you shot, thought about that front door how that can be activated as an element or or not eliminated sure. or what and the other question is has to do with the roof i saw that the roof, the old roof sits on top of the new angled roof um, and so that new little roof is going to be getting some water shed and uh, water that's shedding from the garage roof and where's it going to go so uh, questions there. <laughs> sorry, I'll, if i don't hit them all just let me know yeah i would gladly Can pull those uh those no, shut no. uh off now no. if it wouldn't just no, no. holes in my uh facade we do intend to at some point replace the window with a more modern look and we do we would not do shutters um, if we uh, I think it's possible that we eliminate that entrance sometime in the future if we renovate our kitchen and take over the hallway that that entrance um, creates but that's not part of today's we're, we're going down this road um, but 
but I don't want to replace a door I might eliminate someday and I don't want to take off the shutters at the moment because I feel like all that's going to do is show you know a, a, a shadow of you know where the where the siding hasn't um you know um fade, faded and stuff so I don't think it'll look good oh and then the the water question yeah we, if, Jeff if you could show the, the he's got a roof framing drawing It's A5. So it would it would shed down to the left. It doesn't collect a huge amount of uh, of the roof's water, and we want to put a uh, gutter and downspout on the on the lower left to control where the water will go. So it doesn't. And that's going to come down on the facade of the house. Um, if you go to the, yeah, I guess we didn't draw where the downspout would go, but yeah, I'd put it back in the back of the house as opposed to where the post is. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I have just a couple questions is, uh, it looks like you walk in the house and step down one inch and then up an inch and three quarters. From the new so entrance. how high does your concrete pad sit off the existing grade? So the it's anticipated that we'll have one step, right? Not one. You didn't mean one inch. You meant one step, right? So yeah, I don't know that. It calls out one. Everything oh, else is an inch. Right. Sorry. Yeah. So, so we'll we'll do one step up, which will be the stoop. Then you do one step up into the mudroom. Right, and then you have one step up into um, the hallway. So, um, if you zoom in a bit, you know, to get us to so the my, my question is, do you have that much elevation? Yes, that's how we. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. the The back of the stoop it will be pretty close. the The stoop where it hits the facade um gets pretty close to grade actually and the driveway is is where we're making up the the distance to to get a stoop uh to get a step excuse me at the front okay so, so the, jeff i assume they need a variance to to build this they don't need it because they're keeping it less than six foot eight inches or six feet by eight feet There's a, there's a code exception for um, front stoops like this. As long as the house meets the requirements, then as long as it's less than six feet out and eight feet wide, then they can do it. Okay, well, that seems unusual. All right, those we are the only things I had to ask. Yeah, we designed it to, to, to stay within the code. Okay. Any other questions, guys? All right. Thank you. You may uh, call Jeff's office in the morning and get our answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next on the agenda is 6AR-6-21, 1835 Monroe Avenue, Hanlon Architects, uh, facade improvements to Brighton Commons. I may run out of power on my phone here, but let's give it a shot. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Doug Tumbleton with Hanlon Architects. Um, and what we've got here is the facade improvements, uh, again, for Brighton Commons. And so uh, the last time we presented, uh, we got some, some good feedback and some feedback for some improvements. So we took a look at making some of those improvements, one of which was on the uh, corner along the back side where the parking lot is, where Abbott's currently is, which we can see right here, right, right where the cursor is, um, was trying to increase the presence of that corner so that it uh, mimics the, side, the other side on Monroe Avenue. And that's to give it some more of a massing presence 
Um, so what we did is we, we wrapped the corner with that element and we extended it uh, further down that facade. So we brought in some of the wood siding that we see on that back elevation, which you can see at the top right of the screen, pulled that back around. We have the uh, dark ACM frame as we're, we're repeating that element throughout the project. So we've pulled that back in. Um, we did not add any glass or spandrel panel on this side. We wanted it to be similar, but also different from what's going on on, on the front corner. Um, so we left some of that existing brick there um, and left uh, Abbott's current window in its original configuration. So that was one of the changes we've made since the last time we were here. Uh, the other one, which you'll probably notice was we received some comments about um, the lack of, of depth of the facade, which is a challenging facade uh, with those uh, thin columns that are existing um, that punctuate this backside of the building. And so we, we took a really hard look at it to see how can we achieve some depth, you know, you know more than just colors. How do we, do we box these out? Do we, you know, change some of the roof lines? What do we do? Um, and ultimately ended up you know, by looking at those things, it ended up being more of an economically infeasible for us to do that and introduce another design element. Um, so what we've done here is we've decided to keep those awnings on, um, cleaning them up, painting them a fresh new color, uh, because they do help uh, pull some of the attention away from those existing columns. So in essence, this middle section of the side facade from the um, mall entrance on the left over to the Abbott's corner on the right would be in geometry staying the same and we would be painting it to refresh with these newer colors. Um, and those are that kind of runs through the significant changes that we had since the last time we were here so um, I'd be eager to hear any comments or questions on the facade before we uh, switch over to signage. Fran? I don't have any questions. Thank you. Um, Chris? Yeah, no questions here. Thanks. Uh, Mary? I just wanted to know if there was any sample or ID on the color of those awnings. It looks like an olive drab. Is that accurate? Oh, it's a little brighter in that in that image. Yeah, we don't want it to be a, a pale. We want it to be, and obviously not like a more of a neon. Uh, we want it to be something that's more characteristic of the area. So there's multiple different awning colors in this particular area. Uh, so we want it to be a little bit brighter, nothing in your face. We've got a material, um, uh, there's a color called out. Um, so it's not, it's not, extra vibrant, but it's enough of a change and we believe it creates enough of a distinction and accent to help pull a little bit more attention to it. Thank you. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. Um, where are your mechanicals? Um, all mechanicals are either in, either on the roof I believe most of the tenant spaces are on the, on the roof um, or they are within the tenant spaces themselves. So are they exposed at all to the uh, street or parking lot or? As far as I know, they are not. Okay, so I'd like to get that confirmed. Sure. Um, and you know, I, I assume it will get answered in light in the signage, but uh, are you trying to keep any of the original uh, context with lighting and things like that in signage? So what we're doing with the signage uh, is, is trying to keep, as you said, some of that original context with that original font at the entry areas. Um, and so for the tenant areas, we've it's it's going to be a very similar configuration to what the way it is now where you have the awning and then you have the signage for whatever business is there centered 
vertically and horizontally in that field of EFIS above the awning. So centered between the columns and then centered between the top of the awning and the underside of uh, the cornice where that color changes. And so we have a few different fonts uh, that we've presented, but basically you can see the configuration here. Your choice for the tenant, any tenant that comes in or the existing tenant is you can have a single line signage if your name fits within our bounding boxes. Uh, we've called out the heights for all the for the, the X height for the different letter, different fonts. Um, we've increased our margins a little bit from the last time so that those columns and the, the top and bottom of the signs has some space to breathe. Uh, so it's not crowding that, that EFIS facade. Um, but you can either have the single line of signage or you can have a double line. Um, if you do that, you're gonna, it's almost like a, you have your primary line of signage and then you'd have a secondary line of signage. So if we look, yep, just zooming in on it right now. So that's a good representation of your two options, right? So it's the same margins for both. You've got a different text size. That bottom line would be, you know, the, the tracking, if I'm using that term correctly, would be, of that second line would be matched with uh, the upper line so that you don't have, for lack of a better word, a pyramid shape, where if you have uh, you know, a longer word on top and a shorter word below, we try to um, space those out so it's more of a even rectangular bal balance look to the signage. And if your name does not fit in these different configurations, then they would come to the architectural review board and the planning board for approval. So anything that doesn't fit, if it's if it's too long of a name or if the, if a tenant wants to use their own logo, you no, know, they'd have to come back to you guys. That would be not part of this signage plan. So we're trying to keep a very homogenous look, um, all the same font. It's the same size letters, you know, from the right side to the upper line on the left. Um, You've got a little bit more flexibility if you have a longer name by adding that second line that's a little bit smaller, smaller text size. Um, and so that's, that's how we would like to approach the signage um, for the typical tenant areas. Sorry, I was muted. Anyone have any more questions? Mm -hmm. Well, so, you, I saw the fonts up there. Could you show them to us, Jeff, please? I, you were talking about a sample font last time. So what's going to be? Because we got to have something that's going to work with the original lettering of the, of the comments, which you're keeping in the center phase, right? Correct. We're keeping that on the, on the, we would keep it on the Monroe Avenue side and then the parking lot side over those main entry points. Correct. So are you planning to give people a choice between a serif and a sans serif? Uh, no, our choice would be that they would have the same look um, throughout. Um, so it would be one of these three. So these were provided for the discussion purposes. I see. Our, our primary would be that first one, font option number one, century, uh, because we feel that, that blends well with the orthodontist font it's a little bit different than what's around it. It's, you know, it's nice and it is readable from the parking lot side. We've provided these other options, which more of a, you know, higher visibility from further away and might be um, providing some, maybe a little bit of cost reduction because of it being a sans serif font. Um, but, you know, this is, this would be for a discussion. We would pick one of these and we would go forward and all signage would be consistent. There would be no choices given to the new businesses coming in. Can we see, Jeff, the beginning of that? Uh, to, can you move that to the left so we can see what the names are of the font? So these are channel letters, individual channel letters in all cases. Correct. So how bad a cut? And how tall is the second line? on the signage 
like when you have the two line option, how tall is that? Sir, uh, go ahead, Doug. Um, yeah, so we, we did not call out that size that the maximum extent of that bounding box. Um, but, but you're I talking about an X height of seven and a quarter inches. Hmm. Correct. That high. Yep. And you're going to have a signage company make a channel letter of your serif G with all those twists and squiggles. Seven and a quarter inches tall. Can they even make that? Who's, how is he making, how is the orthodontist making his letter? He doesn't have a G. The orthodontist yeah, I, doesn't I have know. the G and turned. they're a lot taller. So I'm asking a question, but I am very, very skeptical. If you went to ID signs or any of those folks, if they're gonna tell you that they can make a lighted channel letter of a century Gothic G lowercase, that's seven and a quarter X height. I don't think you can make that. Have you verified that? I have not verified that. It's also true that the serif fonts are more legible in a book. So that when you're reading a lot of pages of, of 11 point text that your eyes don't get as tired because the variations between the thick and the thin but for a sign that that doesn't hold true. So personally, I think you, the simpler, the better, especially um, because of the existing Brighton Commons font, which some people are attached to. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. I just don't think you, I think if you want to copy uh, Matt Diacho's, uh, that's his name, right? Yes. Um, font, it's kind of the tail wagging the dog. It's okay if the anchor store has a different, something different about it. It's got a different scale. It's got lots of different things going on, but then you shrink that font down, you shrink that sign down, it doesn't hold, I, 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 that's just my opinion. Right. And some of these, these other fonts, um, also the Meticcio, his font has two, well, his sign has two different fonts in it. Um, so there is a, a sans serif uh, that he uses for orthodontic, orthodontics on his, uh, his signage. So if we go with one of these, it won't be completely dissimilar to his as well. I do have another question when you're talking about the tracking of that lower um, in the two line option where you want it to be square, you don't want it to be pyramidal or inverse pyramidal. Do you have a minimum and maximum tracking value that you're seeking approval for? Because if it were like, you know, Randall's Cafe and you're going to go C A F E, you know. Yeah. That ain't going to work either. So have right. you set that value? Uh, I believe if we, I believe, uh, Jeff, if you could just scroll a little bit to the right, I have some, we put some notes in there. Um, we did, yeah, the goal would be to prevent that from happening. So you wouldn't want to have anything that's, you know, excessively far apart as you're pointing out, right? So if, right here it is. Um, so, if it's, you know, we went ahead and put in, you know, twice what is normal for that particular font. Um, you know, excuse me for not uh, being completely well versed in fonts, uh, but you know, you would have your standard tracking width of a particular font. You would not want to exceed twice that because then those those gaps would get too large, as you're saying. What about if it's um, Jane's? cafetoria or you know do you have a minimum too right you have to have a minimum have you set that i think uh, the minimum would be what we're what we're calling out um on the on the left hand side which would be uh your tracking where it says tracking and x site it's either your font standard 
or a little bit more. Uh, and so that would be the minimum. So you would not decrease any spacing from that. So if the tenant either has too short of a second line or too long of a second line of text, then they would have to come to you for approval because that would not fit nice and neatly into our uh, signage plan here. We'd wanna make sure we took a look at that. It does mention the minimum spacing um, in one of those items there that, that uh... You guys have any more questions? Nope, I don't. Okay. Um, Chris, you all set? Yeah, I don't have any more questions, thank you. Uh, Fran? All set, thank you. Okay, I'm all set as well. Uh, you can call Jeff's office in the morning and um, get our answers. Okay. And, uh, thank you. Appreciate your presentation tonight. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, so, you. thank you. Can I just ask a question? I mean, he, he has the ability to, I guess, self table this application if we don't think the sign is going to be approved tonight to allow, to allow him to not have to make another application. So did we cover the signage presentation? That's a question I have for you, Jeff. Yeah, I think we did. Okay, perfect. But he, he, this was tabled last time, so we'd have to make a decision this time unless he decides to table until next meeting. And we can provide some comments. So I, I'm assuming that you're leaving the, the font recommendation up to us, Doug? Right. Yes, oh. that was for discussion purposes. Um, we've stated which one we prefer, but yeah, I think we're okay with, with any of these fonts. Okay. Or a mix and match, as it were, between the primary and secondary. Did I hear that right? All the the, the Maticio with the Donics having the the serif Maticio, and then the orthodontics being sans serif. Or did I misconstrue what you had said at that moment? That's Maticio's logo. Um, we would want all of our tenants to have have the same look. So there wouldn't be any split between first line, second line. That would all okay, be the so same it's font. All one, so we're basically left to select from either option one, option two, option three, pick one, and that's gonna be your tenant signage, right? Correct. And okay, got it. you know what Maticcio's sans serif font is, Doug? Um, I do not know the name of the actual font. Um, I was just wondering if it was one of the two sans serif fonts you have there. I did on a visual comparison, they look very close. Can, can we see that, Jeff? I don't, I don't know if it's an accurate representation, but what the, no, the, the orthodontist's office, the signage, can we see that? Is, it's yeah. on the rendering, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a that's a different font, but I, he didn't have to do that thing on the second line. Okay, he's got we, he's got a flag left. Are we uh, are we all set? Mary. Yeah. Okay. All right. So did Jeff so call Jeff's office in the morning? And on to our next presentation, which is 6AR-7-21, 149 Cloverland Drive. Uh, Natalia Reggie, uh, one-story addition on the north side of the house. What are you doing tonight? Good, welcome. Well, thank you, thank you. So this is my daughter's house that... Um, we're looking to propose a 20 by 30 addition on the right-hand side of the house. Uh, currently the house is a little over 800 square feet and they wanna add basically two more bedrooms and a master bath. So one of the bedrooms existing uh, will be turned into a master bathroom. So 
So are you eliminating your car? Oh, there's the existing garage. Yeah, okay. don't, the single car garage will stay. Uh, on the right-hand side, we're going to reverse the gable so it, it looks more um, curb, a lot more curb appeal doing it that way. We like to bump it out about four, a little over four feet in the front, so it give a little L shape to it. Um, and again, it's just more for more aesthetics and just having a flat front house. The siding will be changed um, to probably uh, a grayish color. Uh, she hasn't really picked out a color yet, so it'll be lighter gray or a medium gray. Uh, the, the existing roof will be replaced to um, more than likely a black, so it all blends in because the roof that's on there now is that like that orangey red color. Uh, so it really won't go well with gray. So how does this orientate according to Cloverland? Are you a uh, side load? What do you, what do you mean by, see, yeah. So there, the there, there's, 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 yeah, there's Cloverland right there on the right-hand side of the house. Yep, correct. So I guess it's, it's, when I was talking to, I think it was Jeff uh, not too long ago, it's 50 feet currently, uh, or, um, code is 40 feet. We actually want to go 30 feet. So that's why we need the variance to, to make it a little bit bigger on that one side. Is All right. Any, okay. Uh, Fran, you have any questions? Um, the, just, you'd said you're going to switch everything to a gray siding. What is the material of the new siding? Oh, I'm sorry. Of, uh, just a, a vinyl siding. Yep, gray vinyl siding. Um, and we were just literally just talking a few minutes ago, the front gables that you see there, we might do uh, instead of just the vinyl siding because it, it just doesn't look right. We might do like the um, vinyl, but it looks like uh, cedar. You know, you know what I mean? So yes. up on the two front there, it'll be, it'll be a little bit different. Again, and give it a little bit more character than what you see now. And the windows um, that you see here, um, uh, where the, the smaller one is the old bathroom, that has to be moved and then all the, so a total of uh, six new windows for the new addition and the old part of the house, which is that corner right there. Okay, I don't have any other questions, thank you. Mm -hmm. What are the color of the new shutters going to be? Shutters are going to be black. Okay. Did, did we lose uh, Stuart? He said he was out of battery power. It looks like we did. Oh, he's back on. Hold on. I got it. <laughs> Technology, you know? <laughs> um, Jeff, while we're waiting, can you scroll over so we can see that other side elevation, the, the side elevation of that addition? The right elevation? It should be to the left. That, that should be it, yeah. Could you just yeah. put it onto the screen there? It's not on my screen. So that would be, that would be from Cloverland side. Okay, that's yeah. what I wanted to see. Yeah, and then the other side there, uh, which if you move the screen over to the to the right, the one window on the new addition. The only question we had there that is literally, um, if I measured correctly, about twelve feet from the neighbor's driveway. So if we didn't, and it's a bedroom, so we're kind of like debating if if we don't have to put a window there, that would be great because we're gonna have a window on on the other side, but. You know, we'll, we'll we'll determine it. I mean, it's 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 good either way, whichever way we decide to do. But it's again, it's backing up to the neighbors, and they can see right in all those windows. Basically, the neighbors can see right in. Yeah, I would recommend the window stays. Okay, uh, that's fine. we can talk about it. Um, Chris, did you have anything bad? I, I apologize. I don't know who was speaking when I died out. So. I think Barry was speaking. Um, and so just to be clear, the that rear elevation, the window, 
it's new. Yeah, that's kind of off center from the gable. I'm trying to just kind of look at the plan and see what's driving the position of that. The walk-in closet. So they're, they actually centered the window to the room, that, that back bedroom, and the walk-in closet on the other side for the master bedroom would be along the long wall there. Right, so if it were centered in the gable, it would scoot over what, like another two foot four? Yeah, which we can, it's either way. You know, we you don't want it anyway, because it faces the neighbor's driveway. Right. Yeah. Well, but you no, know, it's, um, it's not, hey, Chris, I just want to interject something. Uh, there's a lot of steamer windows and uh, awning windows in the neighborhood. And that's a steamer window. You know, uh, basically a higher elevation yeah, that's why I was just wondering is if would something like that bring some light and air in. Yeah, and without... then you have the privacy as well. And like a clear story. Yeah. Yeah, we could do a long window up top there. Instead of that, instead of that window, then that way we get probably more natural light that way. And you you may be able to balance it too if if we right. have it in the uh, closet. Right. You want to line it up with the top of the windows in the back facade there. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. The top would be the same same height as the top windows, and would just be longer and, and, and a little bit narrower, so you wouldn't see uh, basically be able to see in. So, so um, that was one question. Then, just my other question is on the existing house, aside from uh, residing and uh, replacing the shutters. Is there any other work associated with the existing house? No, no, I'll, the, only, the only existing part is basically tying the roof into the other gable. Old gable into the new gable, but that's it. That's the only thing that's, uh, and of course we gotta, you know, electricians gotta do the, you know, move the uh, outside meter and stuff like that, which is gonna be moved on the back side of the house court when I talked to him the other day and also the um, um, the AC will also be moved to um, this side of the house which is the clover side basically the same spot as it is but just on this side of the addition okay yeah, I would check on that I'm not sure where you're going to be putting it but we don't allow AC units in the front yard that, that would be a side yard well, how is, I don't know. Is that a front or side? <laughs> any, any of the sides facing roads or front yards. So how would that work being the neighbors being so close then? You know what I mean? Because right now it's existing. It's right there. It's in the side. If you pull up the picture, the side, side picture, the real picture, see it? Yeah. Yeah. And see how close the neighbor is there? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So if we can put it somewhere else, it's fine. It's just, you just let us know. I don't want to put it in the front front. It'd be, on Florence side, I think it'll look awkward. Okay, uh, we can talk about it. Okay. I mean, does it help, Jeff, if the ARB just offers an opinion? Because no, it sounds like it's going to be part of the variance, right? Because they're getting a variance for the side yard, or yeah. excuse me, yeah. the, the, the whatever we're calling it, yard setback. And then to just put in there too that the um, AC condenser is better suited on the air quotes side uh, versus right in the neighbor's face, you know, from an acoustic and visual perspective. I'll talk the the applications already in. I can talk to Rick and see if he'd be up for them changing it. But um, yeah. well, and I'm just asking at this point. I'm not even speaking for the board. I'm just yeah. saying, if, I mean, it's if a, hypothetically we were to do something like that, that would be a helpful thing, right? We we can offer a recommendation, but the it is like a zoning issue, not a ARB issue. Yeah, well, I, thought... I guess the good thing is, I mean, if the addition comes out 20 feet, it's going to be beyond their house. So reality, we probably could still put it in the, in the back next to it. So, you know what I mean? It's yeah. That would just make sure you protect it from their plow guy. Well, exactly. oh, that's a little bit, that's yeah. a little further than, than it appeared before. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if we, we could actually probably where the tree is in reality, we probably could put it right there. Is that your tree or their tree? No, um, that's that's their, their our tree. And is it staying? Yes. Okay. 
Good luck with that. So uh, we all set, folks? Yep. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. All right. Fran, you good? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Mary? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So uh, you can call Jeff's office in the morning and get our answer. All right. Thank you guys for your time. You bet. I appreciate your presentation. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Jeff, did you have some additional uh, items on the agenda that were sent in today? Yeah, we have a, uh, well, there's one from 150 Metro Park. So it's 6AR-9-21. Okay. Are they here? Um, yes, they are here. Uh, 6AR-9-21. It was, it was one that should have been on the original agenda, but I had missed it. Okay. Just don't have it on my computer, so. Are they here? They are here. Yep. All right. Go ahead. So um, my name's Eric. I'm from uh, Burnbaum Companies, representing the owner of the property. Um, there's an existing building uh, on the front side of the property, kind of along uh, Metro Park. What we are proposing is a, an additional uh, warehouse building in the back of the property. Uh, it'd be 9,000 square feet. It would be a uh, pole barn type construction, metal roof, metal siding, uh, made of laminated uh, materials. Uh, they're pre-fabricated, uh, pre-engineered buildings uh, brought in and, and put up on site. It would have two tenants in it. Uh, our company would be one of the tenants in a uh, smaller portion for our just warehouse where we store uh, things for the property maintenance. And then the other half, uh, there's no tenant as of now, but we are in talk with one of the tenants in the uh, current building who would want it for additional storage of materials that they already use um, in the existing space that they have. Okay, uh, Fran. Any questions? Um, can you can you scroll down a couple of pages, please, Jeff? And go go back up one so I can see the um, just the rendering. Thank you. Yeah. So these these are um, actual buildings that the contractor we are working with has installed in the area. Um, we would be doing very similar colors or practically the same colors with the light gray and then the dark gray skirting. We would be going with the darker colored doors to match the skirting and the darker colored roof just so it's a little bit more contemporary and a little bit cleaner um, as opposed to the, the brownish color tones. And uh, we have windows shown currently around to help break up the, the facade. We wanted to talk to you to see if you were opposed to those windows being actually faux. Um, because it's a warehouse space, natural light isn't so much of a concern. So right now they are shown as actual windows if uh, that would be required. But if we would be allowed to, we would have the same looking, you know, same size, but they would not be actual windows. They would just be applied. Hmm. Okay. Let's let uh, Mary field that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rich, you're up. I don't get it applied. They're so they wouldn't be they wouldn't be actual cuts into the facade. They would be fabricated after and and applied to the facade where they would look just like a normal window. They they'd be manufactured to look just like one. They just wouldn't be actual penetrations. Um, through the insulation. That way it's also not a security issue if the materials have, you know, more, a higher security also for temperature control, et cetera. Um, so I got a quick question for you. Have you seen a building done with this? Uh, I have seen fake windows done on, you know, plenty of buildings all over. Um, we also own uh, Courtney Commons out in Fairport. Yeah. And there are uh, some faux windows on that. They have a black uh, backing on it and then a glass 
piece over that. So from the outside, you know, it still looks like a window. You know, obviously you can't see into it. It's just a black background at nighttime. They don't, you know, illuminate or anything, but it has the same frame, the same appearance. It's just a, a black background behind the glass. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, Chris, you have any further questions? I guess I'm just confused by the windows. Do you do you want to do them? Do you not want to do them? Um, are you trying to put them there because you think that we're going to want them? A, a little bit of that, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, I mean, the building is not super visible from uh, the road because there's existing buildings, existing uh, trees, uh, pine trees that block the view. However, there is a couple buildings in the back that you know have other owners that would be looking at this building. So rather than just having um, a long expanse of just metal siding, it helps it kind of blend in a little bit more, look a little bit more attractive. Um, with that said, if we didn't have to have the windows, I think we would opt to not have them, but we showed them on there for you know this purpose. So in, uh, in that case, it would be all of the windows that we see would be not there. And the only things on the facade would be the, the person doors and the overhead doors. Correct. So nobody's ever inside this building? It would be warehouse. Um, so obviously there'd be people in it, but it's not like a, a office building or you know people aren't necessarily setting up shop in there with offices or anything. It's just warehouse. And, and you don't think it would be nice for them to have a window here and there? The biggest concern with that, um, like I mentioned before, comes with security. Um, the one tenant that we, we currently have, it, there's a lot of high security risk. And you know having a window might be unattractive to some that might have more secure materials because it's another risk factor that they would have. Um, with that being said, we could put these windows in. So even if it was a combination of fake and real windows, um, you know, if a, a tenant moved in and did want windows, the fenestration would not change, the look would not change. Um, it would just be a real window versus a fake one. Um, have you considered putting the, the possibility of having those windows up higher, like flagging up from the top line of the, of the overhead doors? And the other question is, do you need that storage space in front of what would be the interior of the window? Uh, well, the, the whole space inside is, it pretty much is just storage and, and warehouse. Um, we could definitely look at moving the windows up higher that that's not an issue at all. So you could put real windows higher. Is there a significant savings to use the, the fake windows? Um, it, it would have some savings, especially when it comes to heating and cooling, because then it's, you know, one less penetration that we would have to deal with. Um, the fake windows, you know, as opposed to real windows as cost would probably be comparable. Um, it's just whether or not the windows are purposeful inside. Like I know our warehouse space would never be occupied other than to grab, you know, a piece of equipment. So the windows wouldn't necessarily serve a purpose inside of it. Uh, Jeff, I got a quick question for you. How does, it, uh, you know, fire safety look at such a thing? Uh, I don't, I don't know how they look at windows. I know that there, there is talk about whether they're going to need a um, fire system or not, but I don't know if windows change any of that. Stuart, there are provisions in the code for windowless stories, and I don't know off the top of my head what that, what those requirements are. Right. Um, it, it's, it's, it, they could be fine even without the windows for fire department access, but they would have to check that against the code. Right. Yeah. We are talking with the fire marshal too, just um, with this building about sprinkler and variants and you know what's required so that way we can 
um, make sure that we cover all bases and we can definitely bring up the window issue with him as well and, and get their opinion on uh, what they would require of us. I would think your insurance would want some input on that too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mary, you have any questions? Chris, you're all set? Yeah, I'm fine. I have any questions. Mary? I already went, thank you. Okay, Fran? I'm all set, thank you. I do not have any more questions. Um, so you can call Jeff's office in the morning, get our answer if you'd like. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yep. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Is that everything, Jeff? Yep. Okay. Move on to signs. This is them. They're just replacing, they have this sign here that's on the left, and they're replacing it with the sign on the right. So it has less information on it. Yes. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Fran? I'm good with it. Uh, Chris? Fine. Okay. And uh, I'm all right with it. Uh, next. Nail candy. Am, am I in beauty bars? Am I supposed to get hungry or, or am I supposed <laughs> to be biting your nails? Right. Yeah. Am I going there for beauty or am I going there because I need a sugar fix? Both. <laughs> it's legible. They'll do your eyeshadow for you, Chris, if you go in while you're because I, I need help with that. I need help with that. Jeff, does this meet the, this is within the limits of the signage or yep. is this, yeah. No lighting. They're showing a gooseneck uh, like, over it. Yeah, this. Uh, Fran? I'm good with it. Oh yeah, I see the gooseneck now, thank you. Uh, Chris? Yeah, it's fine. Mary? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. All right. Next is uh, 150 Metro Park, image 360. This is the property we just looked at. Yeah, it's the building in the front. So that's actually the side, isn't it? It is on the side, yeah. They don't have a sign on the front. Uh, Fran? Is is this uh, illuminated? Doesn't appear to be. Yeah, I don't think so. Not illuminated. And the options for black and white are we this are we making that choice or? I don't. So she sent me back the second one and it only had the black. Okay, I'm fine. Chris. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Mary? I'm okay with it. Okay. Uh, next is 1619, 1790 Monroe Ave. Color me mine. So this one did have two options. It has the black background option and then the white background option. All the other signs in the plaza have white backgrounds. Uh, Fran? Uh, Black or white? Can I see the black again, please? I, I like the black. Um, are you good with the sign as black? The font and everything? Yes. Uh, Chris? Um, they both kind of. They're both difficult to read. They both kind of differ a lot from the other character of all the signs on that plaza. If you put a gun to my head, I would say probably the black background 
would would work better because it's not trying to be the black on white. There's just a lot more background than text as compared to like Nikki Nails to the right and uh, the one that's to the left there. I can't quite read. Um, uh, Auto plus or something. Yeah, so the parts plus. Um, Is there any way we can get that centered over their storefront versus over the door? Yeah, no, it's a great you're... observation. I think that would help, but there it looks like there's something coming out of the facade there. Yeah, you can't yeah, that tell. Could be a condition. Okay. At least give um, it a little um, relief from Nikki Nails. I think that'll help. Yeah. I, I so Chris, you're black, all set. Yeah, white on black. Yes, black on white. No. Okay, uh, Mary. Yeah, I think the white on black will be more enduring. It'll look better over time. Okay. And I'm okay as presented or centered over their storefront. Um, next is 2937 Monroe Avenue. Adrian Jules Custom Clothing. Are they moving out of... Uh, the old red barn uh, plaza? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Trying to figure out which 2937 uh, is. It's, uh, it has like Pet Saver and those other buildings in it. Pet Supplies Plus. Oh, it's across the street. Yep. Across the street from where it is. Yeah. Um, so which store is theirs? Pendleton. Okay. Because I know the one on the end is Pittsburgh. So, right? The town line goes through this plaza? Yeah, it's like right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fran? I approve. Okay. Uh, Chris? I don't have an issue with it. Super. Uh, Mary? I'm okay with it. Thank you. Okay. I'm okay with it. All right. We'll go back to the agenda and whittle through our pile. So we have uh, first was uh, business 160 Meadow Drive. 5AR-2-21. Fran? I'm good with it. Uh, Chris? Yeah, I, I think it achieves the objectives, but I think it's kind of silly to have as much of the conduit exposed as they do. Yeah. We can uh, catch it. So um, I think this one's okay. I think the next one we're going to tell them to rethink it. Internalize everything. Yeah. Uh, Mary? Agree with all that Mr. Chris said. Okay, do you, but do you approve this? Yes. Okay. I'm okay with it. Okay, next is uh, 95 Chadwick Drive, 5AR-7-21. Um, I hope you guys outweigh me in the bidding, in the, uh, Approvals because I, I really couldn't hear the presentation and um, I'm kind of lost yeah, and, what's going on there. Yeah, and um, so one thing I wanted to do um, as I was looking, 135 or 138 down the street from this um, has a similar massing. Okay. As I was struggling with, with so many of these additions over the garage, the facade steps in just a hair, and, and there's a clear hierarchy between what's sitting over the garage versus the mass of the house. But I want to see what, what, what else was around it, and there is one. Um, I don't know if I have the ability to share. Um, I can pull it up, too. Yeah, go, go to, like, Google Earth and go to, like, 135 Chadwick Drive.
and I think it's actually across the street from 135. So if you go to 130, now spin around there. So Ooh. this this one is taking on a very similar massing. And so I was struggling with whether or not wow. we should allow that, but it's not excessively dissimilar. So if you just basically put a little gable over what is an open porch entry there, you've got the same thing. But the uh, two thirds of the left side is more in proportion than what you were just showing, Chris. You, you know, the roof lines up the window. Oh, and not following your comment. So nothing really lines up with that example, right? Like the, the door is to the right of the windows above it. Where the proposed drawing shows a little bit more balanced on the left side of the house. Yeah, so you're saying that this this is less balanced than on the proposed. What's pro house. Yeah, exactly. The only the proposed balanced yeah. part of this are the windows above the garage, which they're not yeah. on this one. So, and I don't know how I you see all of that because if you align them above the doors, yeah, they get they kind of fall out of rhythm. Um, you know, but it also kind of separates the house from the garage, though, at the same time. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, maybe I, he drops his ridge line a little bit. Well, I mean, as, as I see it here, is it what I would do? No, it, it's certainly not what I would do. Is it, is it bad? Mm, we can argue about it. Is it excessively dissimilar from what else is going on in the neighborhood? At least from the front elevation standpoint, I would say no. Okay, are people comfortable voting on this? Yeah. Do we want to talk about the box on the back, or are we past it? I yeah. Why don't you guys tell me what's going on with that? I wish well, I could. <laughs> the, fact, the fact is, he wants to do something that all architects want to do, which is more than just, you know something banal he this is his idea of something that's a little more original the point is he showed it to us before we asked him to tone it down he did so i, I mean i don't know at this point you know we didn't tell him to get rid of that and yeah well you don't still right. you don't need to accept it either and actually is it is well i don't want to get back into that argument of it's in our purview of being in the back. Well, I think he made an effort to ch make some changes and, you know, it may not be exactly our dream house, but I, I think I would be okay with um, approving it. Okay, let's go down and vote. Uh, Fran? Um, I just have one, one comment. At, at the front, the last submission, there was a double, the two story entry, which we, we told them to reduce. Now, I, I don't know if this is just left over and it's not intentional for him to show those columns going all the way up, but to have those are the existing, the that's the existing trim. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Um, yeah, then I'm fine. I have no issue. Okay, Chris. I see. Yeah, right. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think I'm good with it. Uh, Mary? I already said yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, proved as presented. Okay. Uh, 6AR-1-21, uh, 430 Metro Park. Uh, Fran? I'm fine with it. Chris? I'm good. Mary? Yes. Okay, approved as presented. Uh, 6AR-2-21. set everyone remember this one yes mm -hmm. a friend i approve 
Uh, Chris? It's good. Mary? I'm muted. Approve. Okay, do you want to make note of your comment about the windows? Um, I don't know because the thing you see that's closest to it has the same little course of brick on the top, which is the garage door. So if it doesn't bother anybody else, I don't think I would make an issue of it. Okay, I'm good. So approved as presented. Okay. Uh, 6 AR 3 21, 30 Stoneham Drive. Uh, Fran? Um, I, you know, I understand that the neighbors are close, but it, I think it would look nice to have, even if it's like a trio of windows on the side elevation, you know, toward the, in the sunroom. Okay. Uh, good, good place for steamer windows as well. Uh, so you want to add windows? I do. If, if everyone else, um, if, if no one really agrees with that, I'm, I could be fine as presented. Okay. Uh, Chris? I, I don't support adding the windows. And they are very close to the neighbor and that is an issue. So I would, I would approve as presented with the conditions that um, the drainage from the porch roof be addressed at grade to avoid yep. splashing on the stone. Yep. That was my only issue. Uh, Mary? I'm going to have to go with Chris on the window issue. And the reason, my reason is a little different. I think that eventually she wants to have a bedroom down there, and that's going to be the bedroom. I don't know where else it would be unless they did another addition. So I'm thinking having windows all the way around is not going to work over the long haul for them. Um, yeah, it would be fine if they were up high. Uh, it would bring a lot more light into the house. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I think they tried to make that corner, you know, kind of like that. Is that the southeast corner? I, I think it is. Yes. Yeah. So they'll get a, they'll get some light coming in there. But yeah, it would be better with more windows. I'm always for more windows, but um, I think in this case, I wouldn't require it because of that reason. There's su such a small house and they might need that room to be more private. Okay. So you're okay with it as presented? Yeah, with the caveat of, of the drainage. The, so Fran, the I'm gonna move your vote into as presented. Yes. No, uh, I'm okay as presented. Approved as presented. Uh, next is six AR-4-21. Uh, Bonnie Bray. Uh, Fran? I would like to see cut sheets on, on what the intent is here. Yeah, and materials, et cetera. Right. Okay. So uh, table or deny or approve? I guess it's, it would be table. Chris? I agree with tabling and in addition to what Franz requested, I'd like to see some details of how they're going to put that material over the concrete. So I'm not convinced that that's yep. a good thing to do. Okay, uh, Mary. Yeah, that's my sticking point too. I I mean, it's one thing to put stone or stone veneer on concrete, but a a, a veneered wood. I, I you, I'd have to see how they they plan on on doing the corners and everything. Okay, I'll table it as well. Let's table. And you got the comments, Jeff? Yep. Okay. Uh, next is 6AR-5-21, 300 Dale Road. 
Um, Fran? Approve. Chris? Uh, approved as presented. Uh, Mary? I wish I could get him to get rid of that colonial door. It doesn't serve any purpose, but I guess- I think if, we, if we're patient, we might get our wish. It sounds like he's got a phase two in his mind, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think so. And I wish he'd come up with a good idea for that front door. I mean, you could even make it a place you could walk out into that's enclosed by railing or a little tiny mini deck or something like that, but it can't be confusing people about how to approach and enter the house. And I think that's not resolved and it's a problem that keeps popping up. But so I can't penalize them for everybody else's problem too. So approved. Okay, so uh, approved as presented. Uh, next is six AR dash six. 1835 Monroe Avenue, Hanlon Architects. Uh, Fran? I approve. Uh, Mary? Are we? I'm sorry, Chris. Sorry, out of order. Chris? I think I was about to ask the same question as Mary. We're just approving the architectural elements at this point, and the signage will be separate, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so this is, in, my vote is approved, it's presented. Okay, uh, Mary? Same with me, approved. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to approve as presented. Are, um, we, are, we do, are we doing a blanket? Because I know we talked about just doing the rear, like the back facade. Are, you kind of, are we approving it as the full building? I was good with everything presented, full building. Okay. All right. Yep. Chris, you're good. Fran, you're good yes. with that. Yes. Mary? I actually found it pretty interesting, so. You, you ask if I approve this? I'm sorry, I had to get up a second. The whole building. The whole building, yes, I approved it. Okay, yeah. perfect. Uh, 6AR-7-21. Uh, 149 Cloverland. Uh, Fran? Um, the... I approve with the conditions of um, doing something with the with the rear window, either yep. spacing it as it is, or to put the steamer windows. Okay. Um, all set. Yes, thank you. Uh, Chris. Yeah, I approve with the condition that uh, windows be centered in the rear gable either a casement is presented or a clear a story or steamer windows. Okay. The key for me is that it should be centered in the gable. Right. Uh, Mary? Yeah, I would say uh, use clear story windows uh, aligned with the top of the existing windows on that facade. Okay. Otherwise, um, and I agree with the committee. Condition. Okay. Uh, and 6AR-8-21, 2000 Clover Street. Uh, Fran? Um, as our comment is uh, to put all the exposed conduits routed through the attic space or for them to search for other ways to keep them concealed. I agree. So table. Uh, Chris? I agree. Uh, Mary? Same here. I mean, they're showing this look, it looks like a nice neat line, but it's actually bending and crossing different. Yeah, it's over the yeah. place. It's a nightmare. It's a mess. It's yeah. a freaking mess. Yeah. Yeah, they have to route internally wherever possible. And I would no. say, I mean, that's not a hardship because all the other companies are doing that. Yeah, right. exactly. So I don't get why they're so different. Yeah, right. I think they're just new to us and they're testing. They don't run into this problem elsewhere. Welcome right. to Brighton. Yeah. 
But I'm 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 not convinced that the other companies when they're doing it in Fairport or or any anywhere else, they're it just makes sense to go through the attic. So I guess I'm 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 scratching my head a little bit of why they like to do it. They can even hang grandma's way. dresses on the on the conduit. Keep the moths out. <laughs> um, are, we, are we saying to route internally wherever possible? Yeah, and it's it's um, tabled. So yeah, I, we want to come back and we want to make sure we understand what. Or, and I wouldn't even say wherever possible. Yeah, right? I would. We've say seen what they think wherever possible means, and and their interpretation is, you know, if it's visible on the street, put it inside unless it's hard, and then go over the top of the ridge or whatever. You know what I mean? It just. Yep. And it's so inconsistent with how we see other installations that I don't think what we're asking for is is that big of a deal if they would just you know do it yeah right so tabled yes and yeah. internalized and um last one is uh 6ar9-21 Uh, Fran? Well, I, I approve as presented, but it sounded like they'd rather not have the windows or, I mean, they're not presenting any other option. Yeah, I think it was, it was, uh, here on either, vacation, it was just us, right? It was either cut in or, uh, pasty on the outside. So, uh, either have them insert the windows or, have them artificially clean on the outside. I really can't say that I have seen artificial windows, um, but I prove this as presented. Okay. Chris? So my thought is it's either approved as presented with these being real windows, right? No problem right. with that. If they want to do something else, they got to show us what it is that they want yeah. to do. And yeah, I would I... discourage the use of, of applied windows over this material. I, I think that's a waste of money. I don't think it would look good and yeah, just total waste. Yeah, I agree. Um, what happens if one of them gets wrecked or something? They just take it down. Nobody's going to chase it down after that. It's just, yeah. it's not a sustainable solution aesthetically. It's not practical. It is a waste of money. And thank you for being champion of my anti pasty campaign, Chris. Thank you. I'm waiting for the t-shirt and bumper sticker, <laughs> you know, on, on an Etsy store, right? Like, where can I, where can I buy my paraphernalia? Well, yeah. <laughs> Those, those windows can be placed up high if they're worried about somebody looking inside. Yeah. It, do, we wanna, do we want to provide some leeway for them to raise the height of the windows? Uh, sure. So if, Make actual, sure it's not a... if actual windows are used in the current position uh, lined up on the lower end with the top of the overhead doors, that would be acceptable. Can we do that? Yeah. I mean, you can, but at the end of the day, um, they have a security concern. It sounds like there's some high value material. So whether or not it can be seen or not, I think it's access control, um, which they can manage in a number of different ways. One of which is eliminating the windows, which I got to tell you, if this thing came in and it had like zero windows or one window on it, where it's located, in, in Metro Park, I don't see that as a problem. So I don't wanna be forcing their hand to force them to provide windows that's gonna create a security liability for them. But we just got nothing to go on here, right? Yeah, that's a good point. So show us what you're gonna use. Yeah, and I think I'd, I'd like to send a signal to that in, in, in whatever commentary we're offering that sure, you can do exactly what you presented here. No objection from us. If you want to get rid of windows, show us what you propose. And so do you discourage? Do you want to table this, Chris? Or 
I don't want to table it. I want okay. to approve it as presented with yeah. the comment that if they want to do something different, they got to show us what it is that they're proposing. Well, and yeah, we discourage I mean, the use of yeah. applied windows. He's saying approved as presented with real windows. Other and if they want to do otherwise, they come in and show us the fake windows and details, etc. Yeah, and right. Attachment, especially well, this but, is on a course, this is that's, on a that's, wall, right? And the, so it's going to be proud of every uh, back piece of that corrugation, right? Just to be like, clear, I don't. I do not encourage them to do that at all. I'm not in, I want to discourage applying windows over the, over the top surface. I want, I want to be clear about that. Hey, so I think I I'd be okay with a lot fewer, even zero windows in this, in this location, but they haven't shown us that. All they've shown right. us is what's in front of it with right. an imagine, if you will, narrative. So I don't want to get yeah. into ifs and therefores, just right. I'd like to approve what's right here. And if they want to do anything different, they got to show us. But you have to stipulate that you interpret what's here as real. Yeah, you're, you're leaving the door open. Yes. Yeah. So approved as, as submitted with real windows. Yep. It, we discourage the use of fake applied windows. Um, and if they want to reduce or eliminate windows, present what they would like. They, they mentioned that they would rather not have windows at all. Right, but we don't know what that looks yeah. like. They haven't presented yeah. it. Yeah, they, so, they came in with drawings with windows. So Maybe they can get a muralist to do a beautiful mural on the side of the building. So sure. I'll give you a good window story. Home Properties used to own an apartment complex up in Beverly, Massachusetts, all Tudor styled on the third floor gables, there were these windows when they went through a capitalization project. I was walking through and I realized that the windows were all painted plywood. They were mounted on the outside of the building. Well, no in, one... in Italy, there's, oh. a, there's an area in, in Liguria on the Italian Riviera. A lot of the houses will have like one, two, three, four windows. And the fifth one is, is completely trompe ploy. And it, you, you wouldn't know it unless you came right on top of it that there wasn't a window there. And they did it because they were taxed on their windows. Sure. It's like the mansards. Yeah. Pretty funny. So uh, everyone good with that as presented? Yes. With real windows. Yeah, with the condition that they're real. Yep. All right. Um, on the signage. I think we, we approved everything but Monroe Avenue. Yep. Right. Right. And Bonnie Bray got table. Yeah. Yeah, no, I meant signage. Oh, right. On my page here, guys. Sorry. Um all right, let's see if we can keep this short and quick. I'm okay with what was shown. I'm Which font? Comments. We have to choose a font, right? On yeah. the font option that was one, in the drawings. Three. So option font one. That, yep, font in the Entry. rendering. Okay. I approve um, that. Brian, you're good with it? Yes. Okay, uh, Chris. I vote to approve option three and deny option one and two. Which is Helvetica? Yeah. Yeah, yeah whatever the one was. Yeah. Mary? I, I want, I go with the Helvetica and I would love it. I wish we could make ma uh, Mariachi, Matacho use it as well, but he's got a different font. Can't do anything about that now. We already approved it. But I would go I, with Helvetica. I can go with Helvetica. And what uh, the primary lettering is uh, Sentry? It is. Who's got a coin? 
We're going to have to flip well, it. You, well, majority wins. Three Helveticas. Everyone good? I yes. do like what's shown in the drawing, but. Oh, yeah, it looks great on paper. But wait till you see it when they try to make it. Okay, yeah, I'm following you. I just think it'll be easier for everyone to adhere to a simpler and straightforward font. Yep, and it's kind of in keeping with what was original. Yeah, yeah, it'll just keep, it'll uh, be discreet. So Fran, you're okay with uh, three? Um, well, I don't have to be. It no, you don't have to be. Three. I'm just right. Yeah, yeah, I have no issue. I have, I, have, I have no, I have no issue with with number three. Where, where are you getting number three from? Primary font option. Oh, it's primary. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, font I option can, one. I, I, I can't see three. the whole. Th I can't see the whole sheet here. I'm getting cut off here. Okay. Okay. There we go. Yes. There's, I didn't see the the words option three. Okay. Fine. Okay. Everyone good? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we will see everyone towards the end of July. Yeah, this was an early night. Yeah, I'm surprised, honestly. Do you, you think it's because there was less of us? <laughs> Could be. I thought Chris a, wanted to talk about Christmas in July. What is it? I do want to talk about Christmas in July. I think we should. You've got to break out your Santa suit, Chris. <laughs> <laughs>